listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Today is a recipe card day, and I'm not going to spoil the fun of what it is because I don't actually remember what we're doing today. <laughs> so <laughs> I am looking forward to talking about food, however, because Erin mm. always brings something amazingly delicious to the table so and you have a prop with you in studio which makes it me even more excited so Erin tell us what you're doing today I today I'll be honest this (laughs) summer there's been a lot Mm, and like it's been there's been a lot of really great and then you're catching up after all the really great Mm -hmm. and so yesterday (laughs) I looked ahead at my calendar and I'm like oh we gotta record tomorrow oh look at it's a recipe card. <laughs> there was no time for polling, no time. And I was like, okay, I got to make something. Well, it happens that my boss somehow got his hands on a church cookbook uh, called The Heritage of Cooking, mm-hmm. a collection of recipes from East Perry County, Missouri. Mm. Wow. This is the motherland, yep. people. And I flipped through it a while back and I was like, oh, this is going to have some potential. So I decided today this was the time Mm -hmm. I was going to make a recipe from this cookbook that I'd never made before and just go for it. And this weekend I wound up with a bunch of potatoes on my hands. (laughs) I don't usually (laughs) have a lot of potatoes, but this weekend I did. And so I thought, let's make something with potatoes. I decided to make Cart Kartoffel Kloss. I don't know how to say that. I've I'm I've got some German heritage, but I have never <laughs> taken don't, German don't language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is potato dumpling. <clears throat> oh. Now some of you might be thinking of what I think I often hear called Spätzl. Mm. This is not those. Spätzl. Mm. There are a number of recipes in the section for dumplings for potato dumplings, and they all are of the same basic format. And it basically consists of you make a a dough, the dumpling dough, and then you fill it Mm. with a crouton. A what? I know, a crouton. Like a salad crouton? Yes. Like a hard, crunchy bread cube? Yes. I I know that was my reaction as well. So... (laughs) It, it isn't just the one recipe, though. There are, let's see, one, two, this three, going, four. <laughs> there are at least four recipes for this basically the same dish. They all have the variations on it. R- Mrs. Rudolf Helwegi, Mrs. Selma Hiller. I love it. Uh, Miss, Mrs. George... Feeler, I don't know how to say her name, <laughs> and Mrs. Hildegard Weinhold. Yes. She's the church right there. <laughs> yep. So, as I often do, I somewhat combine two recipes because the one of them <laughs> seemed to have a little bit more detail on the instructions. Mm. However, it had it was really poorly organized to be telling you the ingredients. So I used the (laughs) ingredients from a different one that was more uh, clear. Before we get into the recipe, could, could you explain a little bit about why Perry County, why a Perry County cookbook would be so meaningful to Lutheran ladies? You said motherland. Now I know what that means, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have no idea where Perry County is or why it matters. Indeed. Let me read you from the introduction of this cookbook. <laughs> oh, of course there's an introduction. There's a, there's a fair bit of little little bit of history included in this cookbook. These recipes have been gathered from old Saxon Lutheran family files, Boy. descendants of Saxon immigrants, residents of Perry County, and their friends. Oh, yes. Perry County was the site of the original landing of the Saxon immigrants. Now, Saxon, I have to assume, means German. Mm. Yes. Um, Which I don't know why they call it. I guess that anyway, that's an old fashioned word. Because Saxon immigrants came to Perry County, but there were other specialized. There were other clans of German Mm -hmm. uh, Lutherans that landed in different places around the United States. But the Saxon 
specifically the the people from the Saxony region of Germany came to Perry County specifically. Mm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So like the, the well well in well in Wendish, the Wendish ones went to Texas. Went to Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes. there was a group that went to, the Franconians went to Michigan. So, so it's Frankfurt. a more specific type of German. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. So more specifically, the eastern portion of Perry County, Missouri has often been referred to as the cradle of the Missouri Synod. Yeah. Like, while there were certainly many other immigrant groups scattered throughout the country, which formed the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in 1847, nevertheless, there were many influential congregations with ha- which had been established by some 650 immigrants from Saxony who left the port of Hamburg yep. in the fall of 1839. Yep. After a perilous ocean voyage, only four of the original five shiploads of immigrants arrived at the port of New Orleans, Mm -hmm. and they then journeyed up. We've talked some about the story in past episodes. We, I remember especially the one about CFW Walther's Walther's wife. wife. Yeah, a lot of the. I'm Emily yes. Bunger. Mama Bunger. Mama Bunger. Uh, yeah. a boss. So there's a lot of this history specifically there for Perry is. County in that podcast episode. At some point, maybe we ought to consider a little field trip. Because, <gasps> I mean, it's yes. not that far nope. from St. Mm-hmm. Louis. So it's not. maybe we ought to consider that. That could be fun. Yes. Uh, so anyway, this recipe book has a collection of... All sorts of different recipes. The dessert <laughs> section was the longest section. <laughs> As it should be. Yes. <laughs> but also, uh, for example, they've got a little bit of history included. <laughs> so there's <laughs> this one little section talking about Trinity Lutheran Church in Altenburg, Missouri. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. Which is the first parsonage and temporary church. And Pastor Lober served as the mm-hmm. instructor at Concordia Seminary during that time. And the building served as a classroom from 1843 to 1849. The lower floor served as the parsonage, while the upper story was used as the place of worship. Although the building, which was located behind the present residence of George Fisher, had hardwood floors, in quotation marks, <laughs> hardwood, <laughs> oh boy. the cracks between the floorboards permitted the dirt to fall into the parsonage below. Oh. <laughs> it said that after the church service, the ladies of the congregation helped the pastor's wife put the beds and other furniture into a presentable condition again. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so anyway, oh, there's nice. a little little squad goals over like here. That. Yeah. So I chose to make these potato dumplings because I maybe you don't know this about me, but I have one really great idea for a restaurant. And I I mean I <laughs> wish true. that somebody would like just develop it. And then credit me with this great idea. (laughs) So if one of you ladies out there has always wanted to be a restaurateur, here you go. It is a dumpling restaurant. Hmm. I love dumplings. Mm -hmm. I love them so much. And this restaurant will serve dumplings from around the world because it's global. Every culture, well, I mean, maybe not quite every, but almost every (laughs) culture has their version of the dumpling, Mm -hmm. which is essentially some sort of a a dough stuffed with something else. Mm. There's pierogi. Oh, I love those. Yes. There's gyoza. Runzas. Runzas. I, I mean, runzas. empanadas. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just so, samosas. Mm-hmm. Bun. It is samosas. Bun. I, I yeah. was... Uh, yes, yes, and I, I was almost worried I got the Girl Scout cookie name. I think instead. it is. There's that extra. Are S they in both? There. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> would we call ravioli a dumpling? Because oh, I feel like so. there could be an oh, argument absolutely. made for that. I think so. <laughs> ravioli a dumpling. Yes, and tortelloni. Anyway, yes. There's so many options. So, so <laughs> dumplings are one of my great loves, and. They can easily be prepared in advance and frozen, and then you just... Anyway, it's perfect for a restaurant. All you serve is a rotating assortment of dumplings and then beer, and <laughs> you, this is a recipe for success. So, Can we get some anyway. Diet Coke on tap, though? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks. 
I wanted, therefore I was like particularly intrigued by potato dumplings. So the way you make these dumplings is you have to uh, first start with cooked potatoes that then are already cooled and then you run them through a ricer or a mash or mash them. I do not have a potato ricer, so I just mash them. Also, here is another uh, failing in this case because I did this all yesterday and did not have my potatoes left over from the previous day already cold. So I boiled my potatoes and then I did sort of a smash them to get them open. And then I put them in front of my air conditioner <laughs> vent. To cool and them then down. you sat and stared at them angrily. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for a while. It didn't, long. it didn't take long. Part of the reason I did that, honestly, is because I remember reading in The Joy of Cooking oh. when they spoke about making gnocchi, mm. another essentially a form of a dumpling. I love But those. it's not filled so that's a subset of the dumpling category. <laughs> um, but they said one of the keys to good gnocchi is making sure you get a lot of the moisture out of the potato. Oh, Actually, it might okay. have been Paula Wolfert, not the joy of cooking now that I think about it. But anyway, they said so it's important to get them open quickly so that the steam can escape. Oh. Otherwise, you end up with gummy yeah. potato uh, so I was like, okay, mash them open, and then I'll let them dry, essentially, in front of the AC. What kind of potatoes were they? I just used just like russets? a, yeah, yeah, just like a, a, a new potato. Well, the, I used the potatoes I had, because <laughs> that's what our German immigrants, our forebears, would have done. They would yes. have not gone out in search of a specialty potato. Okay. okay. <laughs> However, I do think that a drier potato would lend itself, again, okay. to have, it will be... Like yeah. a, so like a baking potato would probably give you a drier consistency. Okay. And that'll show up later as I talk about my experience. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> stick a pin in that one. <laughs> so I just used sort of, it was an all-purpose potato. Uh, so that's what I had. Cool. So the one that I was particularly intrigued by was Mrs. George Fieler. <laughs> Her how recipe. You, how do you spell that? F I E H L E R. Feeler. 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 But you all said that without any stumbling, <laughs> just like immediately. Just, just jump How in. did you just do it? Feeler. Feeler. Because in German, when the I and the E, you always pronounce the second one but like it looks. What about that H? Doesn't that H do anything? Feeler. Hmm. Yeah. It was okay. probably well, anyway, feeler. there was a umlaut involved at some point. <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Mrs. George Feeler, uh, she included onion in her recipe, and I thought that Ooh, sounded delicious. Wow. So first I got my potatoes boiling, and then I did the rough mash and let them cool in front of the AC. Meanwhile, I beat an egg and added salt. I, it might have been a bit much salt. I cut it back a little bit thinking, boy, that sounds like a lot of salt. But I thought, well, it's potatoes. Uh -huh. We need a lot of salt with potatoes. I still think her recipe called is a little salt heavy because when I scaled it back, it was right at the line for me and I can take a lot of salt. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> was it just like consider. regular table salt? As near as I can tell. Oh, yes. yeah, that's that, how they got uh, their iodine. Yeah, oh, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. So salt and then this minced onion mm -hmm. and parsley, which I didn't have, so I left it out. Nutmeg, Ooh. marjoram, didn't have, so I left it out. Pepper, mm -hmm. and then flour. Mm -hmm. Now, in none of the recipes did there was there any sort of a description of what this potato dumpling dough the consistency should be. Apparently. <laughs> Everyone made this. This was so well known that there was no need to describe the consistency of this dough. <laughs> and so, hmm, I felt that <laughs> the dough that I ended up with, I'm like, wow, this is really sticky. I doubled the flour that I included and it was still sticky. So one, using a baking potato might have given me better. So I might at the potato choice I had, oh. maybe, maybe yet that included too much uh, liquid to start with. And so if I had used a drier potato, maybe it would be better. I don't know. I don't actually know what dough was considered ideal. 
Um, Did you scoop out? Was it just the insides? Of, like you scoop out the insides of the potato? You don't put skin correct. and no, such it, in there? It, it seemed to be that there should not be skins in the there. skins. So okay. I, I removed yeah, the Yeah, I guess skins. if you're running it through a ricer, that yeah. makes no sense. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> um. So anyway, it ended up, I felt it was a really sticky, moist dough. And I so I added extra flour. It was still sticky, but I decided, well, I'm just going to give it a go. So once you have the dough made up, then you have these croutons that were so toasted. Weird. I mean, they're not salad croutons because our German forebears, they did not have a schnooks to go pick <laughs> up have Marie a bag of, yeah, exactly, <laughs> salad croutons. They used, you know, dried bread. bread. <laughs> that all of them, or at least most of them specified, <laughs> toasted in a little butter. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Just um, a little. So... <laughs> Uh, so I fried up some some little croutons Ooh, uh, in some crout- butter, and then I put a, a crouton, which they all said it was about you know a half inch square, so about the size of a, a like a playing dice. Sure. Huh. Put I picked up a a lump of this dough, stuck a crouton in the middle, you and just- then uh, sort of wrapped the rest of the dough around it. Now I tried to make sure that there were no openings. But the crouton didn't really want, the dough didn't quite want to stick to the crouton. Uh, so that took a little doing, but I got it, I got it there eventually. So do you mix the potatoes into the dough? Is that how this works? Yeah, yeah. So oh, you, once you have I done have the no rough idea mash what dumplings you are. Them, I'm sorry, I, I did I didn't describe that. So yes, then you do a much more thorough mash and you mix an egg in there along with these other ingredients, oh. the egg, the onion, the flour. Okay, so all of that gets gets formed that's what the the dough consists of i totally thought potato dumplings were like dough with potato on the inside like a pierogi mm. yeah that might be another variation huh. but that is not kartoffel plus huh uh, <laughs> i am learning these things this is exciting also no i'll tell you later so <laughs> i made these dumplings they were about the size of maybe a golf ball when huh. they were when they were finished, they were very moist, and so I chose to put them in my freezer, hoping that that would help them oh, no. sort of firm up a bit, uh, because I was worried that they might like sort of fall apart when I dropped them. You're, the way you cook them is um, in boiling water, oh, oh, yeah. so I was okay. worried that they might fall apart when I put them into the boiling water. Oh. So I I went ahead and put them in the freezer. Once the water had come back to a boil, then I did the, I just started dropping them in. And that part they did actually give, you know, they were all, they were all very clear. They said, have a container with boiling water on the stove, drop in dumplings, not too many at a time. I'm guessing because you don't want the water to cool off too much. Mm. Um, And then they sink to the bottom and then they'll rise and turn and you cook them for about two to three minutes once they're all floating mm-hmm. and they're essentially done. I mean, these are like there is there is an a raw egg in there. Let me tell you, I before I got there, I did taste this dough because I don't have any problem with no judgment some here. uncooked yeah. dough. Fine. This dough was so delicious. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I I probably ate like two dumplings worth of just the dough Mm. um (laughs) no shame me and chocolate chip cookies oh my gosh it was great so yeah then i went ahead and i dumped them in and let's see if oh here we go i have you have video a video i took i took some of these so we'll we'll share we'll share some of this i actually have a video that we're going to share on the instagram it's going to be an instagram special (laughs) so good so Anyway, I was a little worried that it was not going to, that they were going to fall apart. And they did, uh, there was a little bit of like a few places where a piece of the dough sort of broke off and that sort of thing. But in general, they held their form well. Once they were all floating, I then scooped them out with a slotted spoon and gave them a taste. And it was delicious. There were, I think, two of them that I had not done a good enough job sealing them up. And oh. so some of the water had basically gotten soft. into the, yeah, the crouton was no longer crispy. And huh. so it was, it was tasty, but the texture wasn't as pleasing. But most of them, they still had a crunch when I cut through the center of them. The That's crouton amazing. still had a little bit of a crunch and it was delicious. 
Uh, they recommend serving this. The the ladies of Perry County East. recommend serving this. <laughs> East Perry County, yes. Uh, they say pan fried or baked chicken and <gasps> kartoffelklus was a good old fashioned Sunday dinner. Mm. Um, so. Mm. Serve it with some chicken on the side, or uh, rouladen was another okay. another dish in the same section. Oh, I could go uh, for some rouladen so, right now. Oh, yeah, mm. German That's, food is the best, you guys. I don't even care. Wait, what is rouladen? It's, it's like a, a it's like a filled steak that's yeah. rolled, right? Yeah, and it's tied yeah. off. It's, and, uh-huh. it's like stuffed exactly. with pickles and it, things. It is. It is. It's, it's an odd dish, but oh, delicious. Yeah. Yes. So good. Sweet yeah. and savory and sour and everything exactly. put together. That exactly. And it would go really well with potato dumplings. Yes, it would. It would. And mm. let me tell you, I had, I had never made this before. And I was able to pull these off like first time ever from absolute start. No, no leftover potatoes or anything start to finish in probably an hour. And that was wow. not all active time because it had to, you know, water had to come to a boil and so forth. And so this is actually, as you get more of a knack for it, this is not fancy, hard to do food. Mm-mm. This is very attainable food. I also think that it would be quite easy to adapt this to be gluten free. Yeah. Um, pick whatever you would like. I mean, whatever sort of filling you'd want to use, mm-hmm. you could certainly do some sort of gluten free bread mm-hmm. uh, made into a crouton. But honestly, these would also be delicious, stuffed with like a cube of cheese. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, that would yeah, be Yeah, I was going to ask you, is the crouton um, a, a deal breaker? Because I just, is. I love dumplings, but I like them kind of squishy. And yeah. so the mm-hmm. idea of putting something crunchy in the middle of my delicious, so, ooey gooey, okay. squishy dumpling was when kind I of like, crouton, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's the crouton. I don't think it is actually a deal breaker. I was I was going to say it is not. And then I cut myself off because I didn't want to keep talking over you. So crouton (laughs) is not a deal breaker. However, I will also say that these are homemade croutons. These are not the ones that you get in the store where it is those that can sometimes make you feel like, wow, I got to really power down with my teeth to chomp through. I might like something. Exactly. Exactly. No. So if you are making your own croutons, then it's basically That's like true. a piece of toast, which yeah. is not a hard thing to eat at all and just adds a nice little extra crunch in the middle. But you could totally fill these, like I said, with a cube of cheese. Mm. If you mm. actually had leftover, some sort of leftover meat i mean there's Ooh. there's all sorts of things that you could put in the middle like bacon. that's the beauty of a dumpling bacon. indeed bacon <laughs> you, you could make these uh like a baked potato extreme dumpling oh, oh my goodness yes. <laughs> there's Scallions. many options pickles of, of what you could do i'd eat it yeah, it'd be worth a try. Peppers. It'd small be rocks. worth a try. Small <laughs> <laughs> Very small uh, rocks. <laughs> so you could make them dessert dumplings too. Mm. If you spice so, them with like cinnamon sugar. I'm sure that I'm sure you could, and I'm apples. sure someone has apples. Um, apple so, dumplings with caramel apple Being filling. Creative. Yeah, exactly. Like you wouldn't use the onion, obviously, if you're going to take these in a sweet direction. Sweet onion. Um. You know, um, if there are German people yeah. cooking, I wouldn't necessarily assume that. Well, <laughs> I know, but as we've learned before, I'm not. I'm okay with that. But I know that many people out there get get a little weirded out when I start saying this slaw has pickles and apples in it, and it's amazing. So <laughs> you anyway. know what? I was okay with the pickles and apples. <laughs> the grapes were a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> This, so, by the way, is our, a reference to our cowboy slaw episode. You're going to say, how long have you been holding on to that, Erin? Slaw, yeah. <laughs> how long the have you been sitting slaw, on that? Yeah. Slaw, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> potato dumplings, it is an old, old recipe from, you know, the mid-1800s, and it still holds up today. So if you haven't made them and you've got some leftover potatoes, give it a try. Barbecue uh, pulled pork. Ooh. Uh, yeah, there's you could take this in so many so directions, sorry. people. So <laughs> many directions. Mm, I delish. encourage you to consider. Well, I would probably try this just with a 
classic chicken and dumplings recipe because I love oh, yeah. chicken and dumplings. Sure. But I have sure. yet to find a dumpling recipe that I really adore. Mm. So it, it you know, usually I when I make it, it I eat it and I uh -huh. love it. But I'm always thinking, what could I have done differently to make these dumplings even better? And I feel mm -hmm. like maybe potato dumplings might just kick that up a notch, especially I with the will, onion. And, yeah, I will also say that, honestly, I think you could also make these. I think you'd have to do a little bit more finagling with the moisture. But I, I think these could be made with sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. particularly Ooh. if you like seek out uh, like a Japanese sweet potato, which yeah. tends to have a drier yeah, consistency to begin with. OK, um, yes. As opposed to like the classic southern sweet potato. Right. Those are very, very moist. But if you go with like a Japanese sweet potato that has the drier flesh to begin with, I think you could make it with that. Wow. It would have a, sleep, yes. a sweeter profile. But. Sweet potatoes are delicious. Yep. So if you can't do potatoes, try a sweet potato. I think the basic concept of adding some egg and some sort of starch, uh, whatever starch works for you to, to soak yeah. up extra moisture, that, that's the basic concept of how these dumplings work. And then, and then you drop it in boiling water. It's very flexible and satisfying. Sarah, can you eat potatoes? No. Dang it. But I can do sweet potatoes. Yeah. I actually yes. I was looking up sweet potato dumpling recipes just to see how I would how I would be able to do this. And there mm -hmm. were some like dessert variety mm -hmm. ones that looked mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The flour might get interesting because I can only do like almond flour and I don't know how that would mix. Like I don't know if that would cook in water the same way that yeah. regular regular can you do flour tapioca does. Tapioca flour? Oh, tapioca starch yeah. or tapioca something like that. Tapioca starch might work. Yeah. Tapioca Again, starch. Yeah. Keep an yeah. eye on the texture because I I believe that's the primary purpose of the flour in the recipe is to basically make the texture more manageable. Yeah, because I we um, used to have the potato gnocchi all mm -hmm, the time, mm -hmm. and this is basically like a jumbo version of a gnocchi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a surprise <laughs> inside with a surprise of it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, ladies, if you try this out. Let us know if you have your own recipe for potato dumplings, the kartoffelklis, um, <laughs> <laughs> then, then please, please share that recipe with us. Uh, we want to, we want to hear about it. I can't stop thinking about pierogi right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> and runzas. I just want yeah. runzas. But yeah. this was a great, this was a great addition to the recipe card book. <laughs> it's true. So, I am, awesome. I am very, very hungry right now. Mm -hmm. And this makes me sad because. <laughs> I'm sad you didn't bring <laughs> I can't do a lot of cooking at the moment. Yeah. Because we're moving soon. And right. Yeah. It's uh, so when I get all settled in. Be like, hey kids, this is a great how about a recipe that you. you're not going to like, but I will gladly eat all your helpings <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be great for the fall. Like yes. I, oh, eating it yeah. last night was good, but this is a recipe made for cold weather. So once the once you get that first good fall day, make yes. sure potato dumplings. Bobbing <laughs> for dumplings. Not appropriate for excessive heat warning in St. Louis. Not yeah. right now. Which is what's happening degrees. this very day while we're recording. Just, I feel like I'm a <laughs> dumpling in boiling water right now. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I am one. <laughs> we are all dumplings. We are all dumplings in the St. Louis humidity. <laughs> <laughs> Just floating and bouncing around. <laughs> Aaron, that was amazing. Mm. We're all hungry now. Yes. And hopefully the ladies will make some of these and show them maybe with some variations in the group because that would be very cool to see mm -hmm. some variations. And that sounds amazing. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. really easy, too. Which is, exactly. Which is good. It's a good, like, staple food that you can bring to a potluck in the fall, especially if you're having some Oktoberfest oh, oh. things happening at your okay. church. Mm hmm Cannot. And any recipe that will use up leftover baked potatoes is really oh, yeah. helpful because mm. those things, yeah. they just don't shift. No. You like put them away and everyone opens the fridge and is like, what else exactly. do you have besides this leftover <laughs> potato? Three months later, what is this green fuzz? Mm. Oh, scientists haven't discovered yeah. it yet. Yeah. Send no, it to the Smithsonian. When they start growing... Oh, when the when the when the eyes start growing. Oh, oh, before they bake. Oh, if they, if yeah. that happens after they bake, you've got a mutant potato. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's one of them little shop of horror scenarios. 
You don't but want yeah, one just of like those. just like croutons <laughs> and stuffing are a great way to use old dry stale bread. Uh, this is a Definitely. great way to use, and this this recipe actually uses up old bread and old potatoes. Thanksgiving, so, yes. yay yes. for German yes. efficiency, right? Yes. Oh, there's not not much like German efficiency. <laughs> What's the name of these things again? I just want to hear you say it again. <laughs> <Kartoffel Yeah. kids. laughs> How is that spelled? <laughs> You're gonna now totally be like. <laughs> it's okay. Don't even tell me. Don't even tell me. I don't want to spoil the delight of hearing you pronounce German words, Erin. The case that she makes is the best. <laughs> Where can I find it? Here it is. It's K A R T O F F E L. K L O E S E. Hey, you you're doing it right. <laughs> one S, one S, or two S. The one one s Car- so it probably has a the sound oh, two yeah. s is so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i like your way better though <laughs> and there's your german lesson for the day <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh ladies if you try this recipe please post about it in mm. our facebook group if you're not in the Facebook group already, you should go join it because it's super fun. And we will have some bonus content on our Insta page. So be sure you're following us on Instagram as well at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. And as always, you can find all of our podcasts, including all of our previous recipe cards, which we now tend to just mention casually in the rest of these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> find all of those podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app or on the KFUO radio app, which you should all go download right now. Anyway, you're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm a potato. (laughs) And I want some dumplings. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge. It was just this fun little, like, tidbit. Maybe it was earlier. I love to uh, I'm so sorry, guys, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll, you'll cut it out. We don't, it's fine. The It'll work. <laughs> extra long. Oh, yeah, it was. It was at the very beginning. Okay. Now, let me see if I'm able to share my screen so that you can see. I can at least be showing you. Uh, share my entire screen. Okay, yes. There, share. So here, I'll just, you can cut this part out when we get there. But anyway, I, here, so the croutons. Ah. Here was me grating the nutmeg. Mm. And uh, here's my potatoes as they dry in front of my Air bench. Finish. That is amazing. <laughs> Every kitchen needs one. That's right. That's right. <laughs>